Hey there, my name is Jonathan Jernigan, and I'm starting a series on quick bits in Generate Blocks 2.0. This is going to help you get up to speed whether you're brand new to Generate Blocks or you're feeling overwhelmed in 2.0. We're gonna start small today and just look at some of the UI changes, where things have gone, and how to feel familiar with all of the changes that exist just in terms of the UI and how to use 2.0. In future videos, we're gonna look at global styles, class naming conventions, grid, and all kinds of other stuff. So make sure you're subscribed and also drop a comment below if there's something specific you'd like me to cover in a future video. Also, before we get started, shameless plug, I do have a Generate Made Easy 2.0 course coming soon. It's a start to finish guide, shipping websites with Generate Press and Generate generate blocks. I'm super excited about it, but that's all for now. Let's go ahead and jump into the video. I've got two different WordPress installs here. One is using Generate Blocks 1.7, and it's got this gray background. Then I also have 2.0 installed and just this white. So as we switch back and forth, you can kind of see how things have changed. One thing I always like to do to start off with is expand this document overview because as your site gets more complicated and more things are nested inside of each other, it's a great way for you to keep a handle on what is where and get down to a specific object, especially as you drop in more complicated elements like tabs and accordions, getting to the right place can be difficult. So make sure you've got this little document overview expanded. Same thing in 1.7. This is actually a native block editor feature, so it's gonna be there on all of your sites. What I'll do first of all to start off with is just simply drop in a Generate Blocks container. Now you're already familiar with all of these styling controls, I would imagine if you're an existing Generate Blocks user, but if you're not, you can see things are relatively straightforward. They're kind of grouped together in logical ways that make sense. So for this container, if we wanted to add some padding, we could go ahead and just drop two rim of padding on all sides. We could come in and you know drop a border, some kind of gray color like that. And let's make it a bit darker so we can actually see it. And then maybe we want a you know 24 pixel border radius, something like that. Super easy, pretty self-explanatory. You can kind of just find what you need. Then if you wanted to change the background color of this section, you come into colors, background, and we can just make it white. The catch here in 1.7 being that if you were using a global style, which is essentially a CSS class, it was a totally different set of controls. Again, I'm not gonna get into the specifics of global styles in this video and how I use them, how I name them, that kind of thing. That'll be for the future, but I just wanna go ahead and drop one randomly on here so we can actually go into that interface and see what it's like to edit. So you can see it already is a little bit different. We have some controls up at the top here to change various selector states like hover and the links inside of this. And you can even add your own custom ones. Again, really advanced, we'll cover that later. But we also have our responsive controls so we can do our tablet and mobile views and we could even create our own at rules. So if you have a weird breakpoint, your client has a tiny little laptop and they're saying stuff doesn't fit, you could add that in this control here. I'll jump back up to the desktop size so we can see everything here. And then in our layout, you could just you know set your flex or grid controls, depending on what you need, tons of different options in the layout. But this is all stuff that is relevant when you're creating the CSS by hand. So this global style system is a big step up in terms of complexity, but also in terms of capability. Now, every single property in here for the most part is a CSS parameter. Your sizing, you know, width, spacing, borders, all this stuff is things that you would be writing with CSS. So that's essentially what this system is doing for you is writing that CSS for you. But again, in 1.7, we had this difference between editing a global style and editing a local individual block. So let's say for example, I drop in a headline here and on this headline, I wanted to change the text color. Well, in the regular interface, I would come to color and text and then I'd make it blue. I could just say, you know, blue headline. But then if I had a global style, something like, you know, H1 alt, if I wanted to change the color of this particular global style, there's no color button. Like, where did that go? Well, it's under typography and text color because that's the CSS property. So then in this case, I would go to text color and set that to blue. Now, when we go over to 2.0, let's drop in a container. And just for the sake of simplicity, we're also gonna drop in a headline element on top of that as well. And you can see right away when you add these components inside of 2.0, there's this settings little cog here that is selected at first. What this does is expose some of the common controls for the block you have selected. So in this case, we could switch our H2 down to a paragraph tag or you know H3, H4, whatever we need to do. That's just a simple, quick tweak. And then if you have a container, it exposes some other controls like adding a shape divider, background image, uh, if you have an image, it's gonna put like the you know URL and the selector to grab stuff out of your media library. And of course you can still add a global style just like you could before, but we have this styles tab here. And now you can see that 
Again, reminder, we're working on this individual container right here. We're not working in a global style. And all of these controls now match what they did in the global style system in 1.7, but inside of this individual block in 2.0. So in some ways, this is good because it gives you a lot more power and flexibility and the interfaces match between local styles and global styles. But in other ways, it is a little bit more complicated for exactly like cases I just mentioned, where if you wanted to change the color of this headline, for example, you don't have a colors option. You have to go to typography and text color. We can just set this one to blue like we did before. Now, for the most part, I would say things are grouped more logically, but it is gonna be a little bit of a learning curve for you to just poke around and find the specific control you're looking for. However, there is this super handy search feature here. So if you just can't find it, you could type in the word color, for example, and it's gonna bring up all the controls related to color. So in this case, it's going to be you know the borders, there's the typography, background color, fill, stroke, et cetera. Or you can get more specific and you could say text color because that's the actual CSS property that you're going to be modifying, which would be text color. Or if you're looking for box shadow, you can type that in and it's gonna bring up the effect control for box shadow, which is really handy. And honestly, I find myself doing that rather than hunting through all these panels, because as things start to get open, then you can see you, you can scroll for so long and I don't even have everything open. So you just get lost in where you're at. I rely really heavily on this search feature. In this case, I could just type in the word size and I could change my headline to a font size of you know five rim or something like that. And then just go back to weight, font weight, 700. I find this way, way faster. So yes, it is frustrating to some extent that the UI changed, but I would say that this is actually a level up both in terms of capability and also in usability. The other cool thing is we have this ability to show only controls that have something set in it. So this says hide empty controls. Now, because on this particular headline, the only things we've done are modify text color, font size, and font weight. You can just see those right there. So if you need to make a quick tweak, you could say, whoops, I mean, meant to make that six rem instead of five. You can just drop that in rather than kind of having to come in here and find where the heck the text size is. And there, you know, you get the idea. Now, again, in 2.0, our interface for editing an individual element like this one headline and a global style now matches. So we had this same you know, main selector. We can do all the kind of custom selectors, our responsive controls, search, this filter control, and then just the grouping of the individual controls down here all match. So if we were to go ahead and maybe let's just say on this container, we dropped in a grid to global style when we edit that, then you can see everything now matches one-to-one. -one. So this actually is, I would say, a nice improvement because things are the same. You have the same controls and the same options in the same place rather than things shifting around. Another big one is the difference with the grid block. So the grid block used to use this kind of flex layout under the hood with negative margins and some margins to uh, actually set up the spacing and it was really easy to use. So let's say you wanted a three wide grid. You click the three here, drops in three containers, and then you just set the individual widths. So you could kind of mix and match these here. So if that one needs to be 50%, this one needed to be, I don't know, 25. You know, you get the idea. You, you're familiar with how this worked. Nice and simple. Now, when we drop in a grid, what this is going to do is use actual CSS grid under the hood. So makes it a little bit confusing. You do have the same kind of layout controls and it will add those extra containers in as you modify that control. So you can see it's adding and removing containers, which is kind of handy. But what it's doing when you change this is we go to the styles panel, layout, it's set this container to a display of grid. And then inside of that, what it's doing is the grid layout is it's using the CSS rule repeat three. So what this is saying is the grid layout will repeat three times, which is why our containers have three like that. Then it can be a minimum size. You can see min max minimum size of zero. So it can get as small as it needs to. And then a maximum size of one fractional unit, which is just basically one equal portion of the space that it's you know eligible to take. Now, sometimes CSS grid can be confusing, but once you get a handle on it, it's really not that bad. It actually is pretty flexible too. Just like how in 1.7, we could mix and match the widths of the individual elements. You actually can do that here in a repeatable pattern, like in this 
example, we could do one FR, two FR. And then what it's going to do is make that grid take up one fractional unit of the available space. And then that one going to take up two of the available space. So it's gonna kind of calculate that for you. Now, this particular setup isn't quite as flexible as those repeat rules, but there's lots of CSS grid generators out there for you. And of course, most of the time you can get by with whatever is right in here. So this grid component is definitely a little bit more tricky to use, but later when we look at global styles, I'll show you how I simplify this so I'm not fiddling with grid template columns and that kind of thing really at any point except just all I have to do is drop a global style on my container and it will turn it into a grid with exactly the right layout I use. And I'll show you that, like I said, in a future video. Another thing that's different in the Generate Blocks 2.0 update is we also have a text block. And all this is is just a little skin on top of the headline. So if we wanted to switch it to an H2, we now have the ability to switch back and forth between paragraph and a headline. Whereas before you were basically stuck with just going with a headline you had to drop that in and you could switch it to paragraph, but there was no way to drop in just directly a paragraph element except by using the native you know, core paragraph, which was fine. And in fact, sometimes I still do use that, but more often than not now, I am dropping in a text block inside of 2.0 because then you have all of the generate blocks styling controls. If you know you're never gonna need to style that text and just whatever the default is is totally fine, you still could use just the core paragraph block, but then of course you don't have any of the generate block styling controls. So it is handy to have this actual native text block there now. So with that, I hope this has been helpful to understand the differences in the UI changes. Now that things match both for the local and the global style system, keep this document overview panel open, that's gonna help you a ton, and rely on this search functionality. There's lots more for us to cover and I'm sure there's little nuances here that you're struggling with. So be sure to drop that in the comments and I'll incorporate that into future videos as well. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.